In this module, we will discuss the landing gear system and its operation. We will begin with a brief overview, followed by normal operation, nose and body gear steering, air ground sensing, configuration warnings, and conclude with non-normal operation. The landing gear system consists of one nose gear with two wheels and two wing gear and two body gear with four wheels each. The wing and body gear are mounted on truck beam assemblies. In addition to conventional nose gear steering, the airplane has steerable body gear. The truck assemblies for the wing and body gear are tilted by hydraulic actuators to fit into the wheel wells. Each wheel well has hydraulically actuated doors. They are in the closed position with the gear either extended or retracted. Each gear assembly also has mechanical doors linked to the gear. The landing gear lever is located on the center panel. The gear lever has three detented positions, up, off, and down. Landing gear position is displayed on ICAS. For normal operations, a single box for landing gear position is displayed. Alternate gear operation is controlled by two alternate gear extend switches. Hydraulic systems 1 and 4 power the landing gear systems. Note that hydraulic system 1 powers nose and body gear actuation and nose and body gear steering. System 4 powers wing gear actuation. Now, let's discuss normal landing gear operation. Gear lever down position pressurizes the down lock actuators. This locks the gear down and pressurizes the gear hydraulic actuators to the down position. Landing gear lever lock prevents placing the gear lever to the up position when on the ground or with unsafe conditions in flight. In flight, the gear lever lock is released when the wing and body gear are tilted and the body gear are centered. The airspeed limitation for gear retraction is 270 knots, or 0.82 Mach. This airspeed limit prevents structural damage to the gear doors. Placing the gear lever up pressurizes the gear door actuators to open the gear doors. When the doors open, hydraulic pressure releases the gear down locks and pressurizes the gear actuators. The gear move to the up and locked position and the gear doors close. During gear retraction, brakes are applied automatically to stop wheel rotation. The ICAS gear in transit indication is displayed while the gear move to the up and locked position. The ICAS gear up indication is displayed when all gear are up and locked. The gear up indication remains displayed for 10 seconds after all gear are retracted. Placing the gear lever off depressurizes the landing gear hydraulic system. Question. Question. 
Answer A is correct. Airspeed limitation for gear extension is 270 knots or 0.82 Mach. This airspeed limit prevents structural damage to the gear doors. Placing the gear lever down pressurizes the gear door actuators to open the gear doors. When the doors open, hydraulic pressure releases the gear uplocks and pressurizes the gear actuators. The gear move to the down and lock position and the doors close. The ICAST gear in transit indication is displayed while the gear move to the down and locked position. The ICAST gear down indication is displayed when all landing gear are down and locked. The airspeed limitation with the gear extended is 320 knots or 0.82 Mach. This airspeed limit prevents structural damage. Question. Answer B is correct. Let's now discuss nose and body gear steering. Recall that airplane steering is provided by both the nose and body gear. The body gear turns in the opposite direction of the nose gear to provide a smaller turning radius and reduce tire scrubbing. The primary airplane steering controls are the tillers, located on the captain's and first officer's sidewall panels. Tillers provide nose gear steering authority of approximately 70 degrees in each direction from center. The rudder pedals provide nose gear steering authority of approximately 7 degrees in each direction from center. If both the tiller and rudder pedals are operated simultaneously, tiller inputs override rudder pedal inputs. Body gear steering is automatically activated when nose gear angle exceeds 20 degrees and body gear steering is armed. The gear steering automatically disarms at 20 knots with increasing speed. Body gear steering is automatically armed at 15 knots with decreasing speed. Question. Answer B is correct. Let's now discuss air ground sensing. All that the wing and body gear tilt after takeoff to fit into the wheel wells. This tilt function also provides air ground sensing for certain airplane systems. Nose gear sensors also provide air ground sensing for certain airplane systems. With a compressed nose gear strut, the sensors provide a ground mode signal. An extended strut provides an in-flight mode signal. To ensure reliability, each main landing gear and the nose gear have primary and alternate air ground sensors. Question.
Answer A is correct. Let's now discuss the landing gear configuration warnings for takeoff and landing. The ICAST warning message, Configuration Gear Center, is displayed when either body gear is not centered and thrust lever 2 or 3 is advanced for takeoff. approach below 800 feet radio altitude. The ICAST warning message configuration gear is displayed with any throttle at idle and any landing gear not down and locked. The ICAST warning message configuration gear is displayed when landing flaps are selected and any landing gear is not down and locked. Question. Answer B is correct. Let's now discuss non-normal operation. Non-normals include body gear steering, gear tilt, gear lever, gear door, and gear disagree. Let's begin with body gear steering. ground, the ICAS advisory message body gear steering is displayed when the body gear has not been commanded to turn and body gear steering is unlocked or the body gear steering system is pressurized. The ICAS advisory message body gear steering is displayed after takeoff when the body gear are not centered. When the body gear are not centered, gear retraction will cause wheel well damage. The ICAST caution message gear tilt is displayed after takeoff when one or more wing or body gear are not tilted. When a wing or body gear is not tilted, Gear retraction will cause wheel well damage. Recall that the landing gear lever lock releases when the body and wing gear are tilted and the body gear are centered. If the lever lock fails to release, pushing the lock override manually releases the lever lock. The gear lever can then be moved to up. ICAS advisory message gear door is displayed when any gear door is not closed and the gear is not in transit. When a gear door remains open, airspeed limitation is the same as the gear extended speed, 270 knots, or 0.82 Mach. The ICAS caution message gear disagree and the ICAS expanded gear indication are displayed when the gear lever is placed down and one or more gear does not extend. The expanded gear display is also displayed when an alternate gear extend switch is pushed. Pushing the appropriate alternate gear extend switch releases the gear doors and gear up locks. Gear free falls. The weight of the gear plus the force of the airstream 
pushes the gear into the down and locked position. Airspeed limitation for alternate gear extension is the same as for normal gear extension, 270 knots or 0.82 Mach. After all gear are down, placing the gear lever to down pressurizes the gear hydraulic system. This will ensure all the gear are down and locked for landing. If the affected gear fails to extend, the airplane is designed to land safely with both body gear not down or with both wing gear not down. Or with one body gear not down or one wing gear not down. Question. Answer B is correct.